everyone, welcome to another uh, episode of Metamen. I haven't done one in a while, right? I think the last one was after season, what? Season 7 or whatever? The tournament ended, and we're about to go into an era without these kind of seasonal tournaments anymore. At least, not the ones that we are uh, always been used to being subjected to every every two weeks or so. Um, but yeah, um, 1.7 is coming probably in a few hours after this is uh, released, uh, this episode. But um, yeah, it should be fun. Anyways, uh, today it's just me and uh, Temerity here. Uh, but usually Dwebble's always on here, but I think he's on vacation or whatever. So well, that should be fun for him. But uh, yep, just me and Tim. And... We're going to recap some of the 1.6 stuff, and then uh, also talk about 1.7 a bit. So, anyways, Tim, uh, 1.6, last dying hours of 1.6. Although, once this comes out, it's probably going to go into maintenance. The game's probably going to go into maintenance. So, uh, uh, rip 1.6. So, 1.6 brought us a lot of things. Uh, we got, obviously the alliance missions and then the increased range for drones for you know supply drops and strike towers and stuff and um those i guess are the biggest uh up updates in 1.6 would you agree i would absolutely agree i think adding the drone range was mm -hmm. absolutely crucial for player happiness because i mean now now People may not be able to get out of their house or are stuck at work all day, and they mm -hmm. may not be able to do these strike towers or spin stops to shoot dinosaurs, dart dinosaurs. Um, so I thought I thought adding that was a really big change on their part in a good way. Mm -hmm. Like... Um... At first, it like really doesn't seem much, but it real like it really adds up. Like it's not something like explosive, like oh, it's not like you're getting a free epic incubator each day. But um, it's you know if you put in the work, um, you, you still get a, a decent amount of uh rewards from the increased ranges. I personally benefited greatly from this increased drone range, so now I could do strike towers in my home, so I don't have to wake up like you know uh, uh, seven o'clock in the morning do these strike towers outside. Although it's it's getting warmer and uh, the days are getting uh, brighter earlier, but uh, it would especially help during the winter uh, when that time comes back around and I'll have to do strike towers early in the morning. But um, yeah, it definitely helps. Um, but of course. Uh, you still have to, if you want, you know, more increased efficiency, of course, uh, getting out there and um, exploring um, on, on either on foot or in a vehicle, of course, uh, would be more uh, efficient. But, um, you know, sometimes when you, you're stuck in a place and you really can't, and you're like out of darts or something, you could spin some uh, drops around you in range which don't give the most starts, but, um, you know, th th three or four drops should be enough for one darting session. Yeah. I, uh, I know, I know a lot of times, um, I don't get much chances to hunt during the day and being able to spend stops around me. I got about 15 stops at work that I can spend around me, which allows me to actually shoot some, daytime dinosaurs which has helped a lot mm -hmm. and other than that the other big addition to 1.6 was the alliance missions which is it's, it's had its struggles uh, when it first started out like we almost had like a month without alliance missions like what three weeks or four weeks without it just yep. because you know they totally screwed it up <laughs> and then um also uh, something weird about it is we, we did find like what 20 or 30 sets of different rewards from alliance missions um, from the data mine but apparently for some reason they never really added it um, or, or rotated the alliance missions for some reason so I found that one kind of weird so uh, thoughts on alliance missions Tim? Uh, I like them it allows us to get a good quantity of 
DNA coins, some ca extra cash um, that we wouldn't otherwise get. But I am the type of person that likes variety. I don't like things to go stale. So having mm -hmm. um, having a change of pace would, in my opinion, uh, benefit the community. Mm -hmm. And like, it, you know, this DNA, of course, it's free DNA. It, in in most uh, views would benefit, right? But also a problem with just having Cyanoceratops DNA week after week, like, it, you know, if you fit, if, you, if your alliance hits rank five on exploration, which is quite, um, it's not hard to do. Um, that's 500 Sino each week, and that really builds people's Isla Sinos and Renixes up really fast. And uh, that would, I would say, cause a bit of a, um, uh, an imbalance in the arena regarding those two um, hybrids, which are really, really strong, both, um, at least in 1.6. And, um, yeah, I don't, I don't, like, I don't have the numbers. I'm not Ludia, so I'm not sure about that stat, but it is something to think about, as well as uh, Tristan 2 for Drake Ceratops, is obviously one of the best dinos in the game. Um, that could also have been a problem, but again, I don't have the numbers to confirm or, you know, deny any of that, but, you know, just just a thought, I guess. Yeah, that's also another reason why they probably should have rotated the DNA, um, even if they didn't want to. I completely agree. Mm hmm Like, yeah, uh, um, uh, I think, um, in, in the data mine we found, like, different sets with, like, Ehrlich, uh, th there's, like, an Ehrlich set, there's, like, a Pyro set, and I know I'm just talking about epics, I can't really, but, you know, the rares and commons, they would be like similar themes, like you'd have an Anki, uh, and Kyla Kadon, you have a Cephalus set or something, uh, of a set of rewards, but uh, we never really got to those. But uh, anyways, um, any significant um, balance changes in 1.6 that you uh, liked or disliked in terms of creature balance? Um, I thought the balance in the arena was actually very um there was a pretty decent variety um obviously you got your you had your tyrants but i mean a lot of the dinosaurs that were like mid apex and higher still had viable outcomes in the higher arenas which i don't think we had too much of that in the previous uh patches Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's for sure is true. Like personally I, I still run a lot of things like Trigodistus I run, Pontosuchus I still run, and I know I crap on it a lot, but um I don't know, Spontosuchus might have a comeback for me or on my team in one point seven, uh, which we'll get into a bit. And um I know a lot of people complain about Triceratops, that was like the biggest issue I would say say that that a lot of people talk about in 1.6 and uh, and as, as i've said before i personally don't have a problem with it but a lot of people do so um that was a problem in 1.6 on ludia's part although in 1.7 that they, they've made a lot of you know new counter strikes there which um in general i guess uh, uh I, I don't mind that helps the game obviously but uh yeah um Overall, 1.6, I would say, if I were to rate it on 1 to 10 scale, I'd say I'd give it a 3 or 4, honestly. Um, the improvements were good. Um, the creature balances, for most part, were okay, but um, I'm just, com I'm not, com I guess I'm not being fair to it by just evaluating it on an individual basis. I'm kind of comparing it to the past patches and comparing the content and stuff. And honestly, 1.6 doesn't have as much content, I think, as any of the other patches. Like 1.3, I think it was, we got uh, strike towers, and 1.5 was alliances and trading and all that. Uh, I, I just really don't think 1.6 really holds up to any of the other patches. Yeah, I would, I would have to agree. There's, there's not much content coming from this patch. Um, like I said, you just got... Um, 
We got alliance missions. So you, you add a little bit more to your alliance. Mm -hmm. The drone, which helps a lot. It's a, I wouldn't say it's a huge thing like Epic Sense or Strike Towers, but it is mm -hmm. a nice oh, little add on. Um, and then you did have, I think, a good variety of uh, for a meta. But other than that, there really, there really wasn't much mm -hmm. um, in terms of um, like even even the usable new dinosaurs. We only really had one top tier, which was Proceratha Mimus. Mm -hmm. The others were eh, good. Or, a close second. It's it's good, but I mean, in the higher tiers, it just mm -hmm. it it doesn't do any damage. It's I think it's its biggest problem. Yeah, um, and uh, j just on that point, um, and before we get into one point seven, I just want to talk about it for a uh, quick second. I think, um, that's gonna be a. A, a, a continuous problem I, f I might foresee in 1.7 uh, which are these new hybrids not that they're any bad looking at we don't have their stats yet for sure and and, and stats can make a huge difference but um, they look good on paper but like the biggest problem is no one can really reasonably obtain them and keep them at team level um, for the vast majority of the player base which you know, I think um, Ludia failed pretty bad on the hybrids in 1.6. So uh, 1.7 hybrids aren't looking too good at the moment either in terms of, um, uh, you know, um, uh, usability and and um, uh, the amount of people who use them. So that's looking like a yikes to me right now. Yeah, they're, they make it <clears throat> a little bit hard to make these the hybrids i mean in 1.6 we got two uniques with mm -hmm. darwin dna you need darwin at level 20 to to um make terror vexus and then obviously you, level uh 15 or whatever for stiggy derricks but i mean it was like like you said you need a lot for something that's not going to have a big outcome. Mm -hmm. um, and looking at like 1.7, the new sauropod, how many people are actually going to be able to make it Right. with, with Diplodocus DNA being so rare? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Not only Diplodocus, even around with Giannio DNA, like, damn, that's going to, like and yeah, I guess that's the it's a really big problem man. Um, one point six like, uh, Darwin's Opteryx and Herovecus obviously has that DNA sharing problem. Stegodrex that's made from Stegogen one, although or not Stegogen one, Stegogen two. Although you know it's not the worst thing to be made out of, but still it's still to an extent uh, extremely limited. Schoolosaurus sco with Schoolosaurus being tournament exclusive, ain't nobody keeping that thing at team level. And Proserathomimus made with Proceratosaurus. Um, the Hybrid Pursuit Week helped a lot, but it came super late um, in the update. And, you know, if you are if you just started playing, or, you know, if you haven't played as long as uh, some of us uh, have been playing, like, Pro, like Proserato DNA, it's not easy to come by. Um, and, uh, like, the only, like, really super easy, uh, I guess, or easier to create Dino, probably Edmodoguandon. Which, um, it, it's, it's great. It, I guess is the only one that really, um, is more easier to create. And also don't forget Darwin. Um, Darwin's in parks. <laughs> Crying out loud. And also, um, Terra Vex is made from Monomimus. Gallimimus is arena locked. So, a lot of issues with these hybrids. And, um, looks like a lot of those issues are gonna still be a thing in 1.7. Anyways... Um, moving on to, uh, 1.7, uh, oh, actually, one more thing I want to talk about before, before we move on to 1.7, um, uh, among a lot of their blunders, um, 
a lot of these special events, which we've had really great ones that benefit us personally, but kind of does ruin the balance a bit, right? Um, you know, when we're talking about stuff like the St. Patrick's Day event with the five attempts on the uniques, like folks in Badlands could like get a level 22 Trichosaurus after that event, right? Or or a Trico and an Earldom, like that's that's pretty huge and it really disrupts like uh, the arena balance a lot when you could, you know, have two uniques and then you're, like the rest of your team is average level 13, like that's, that's a bit of a problem, right? Also Valentine's Day event with five attempts on legendaries, you know, it, 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 it really it's it really changed in comparison to um some events that we've got uh earlier last year like the halloween event which we have to talk about because it's a meta minute we have to talk about the halloween event <laughs> um, but you know yeah um i i like the dna but it does cause a, it cause a bit of a problem there which um ludia i think they're trying to uh, fix for the most part at least um going forward they probably won't have such imbalances or trying not to have uh, such imbalances going forward in terms of their events. So yeah, that's the last thing I want to touch on. Okay, um, move on to 1.7. Uh, a lot of stuff in 1.7. I would like, just reading the patch notes, um, seems like 1.7 is adding a lot more uh, content to the game than uh, 1.6 with the biggest, I think, the biggest, most game-changing element which is going to be added to the game which are stat boosts and oh boy stat boosts extremely controversial and it hasn't even launched yet so um once you hit player level 10 you could use stat boosts and like you have health attack and speed boosts um and oh boy this is gonna change like the game forever <laughs> so what are your thoughts on stat boosts um <clears throat> i think for the most part, I didn't read too much into it, but I think for the most part, I think stat boost should be a separate arena. If you want to do it, fine. But um, for the people that can spend a lot of money on this game, mm -hmm. stat boost is going to give them a absolute insane advantage, which yeah. I, I understand that these people help create content but this is like far exceeds the amount of what it should do. Um, I I kind of like it, but I don't. Um, in terms of team building, you can you can use anything. Yeah, I can power up a Gallimimus and have it deal twenty one hundred damage on a strike or something mm -hmm. like that. Um, that much I don't like because I I love strategy and not being able to build a team against a meta mm -hmm. um, kind of ruins it for me mm -hmm. but at the same time I find it interesting that I can if they do make an arena I can start playing with different dinosaurs that I normally wouldn't use mm -hmm. Um, like something like I would, I would really want to run Stiggy Derricks. So being able to like boost its HP would be awesome. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of fun, but I, I see ups and downs to it. It really depends how they go about it, which I hope it's going to be a separate arena. Mm hmm but I'm not keeping too much hope on it. Yeah. Um, here's here's my thing about it, and, and I have a lot of problems with it. I'm just going to talk about one aspect uh, of it first. Um, a level up. Uh, each level up on a dino increases its HP and attack stat by 5%, right? And if you're looking at a dino, say... Um, a really hard to level up dino. Uh, let's say Trichosaurus, super hard to level up. Um, one level that's 5% on attack, 5% on HP. And that would require, you know, e even if you're, say, you're not at a really high level of a Trico yet, say you're at like level 25, 
or 26 just for oh the hell of it um so say at level 26 at, at a level on trico it, you know um, assuming there's no beneficial events during this time getting it to 27 could take you a month it honestly could just really take you a month if you're like not that lucky if you got you know if you're if you don't have all the time in the world to play this game um you know you have a you have work or life and that um it, it could take you a month for that five percent boost on hp and uh, attack but now with stat boost um something that someone might work a, a whole month for someone could just drop and we don't know the prices yet but you know say like drop 50 bucks and boom there you have it um it's effectively uh, it's the same thing right um one stat boosts is what five percent as well right um increased up to 50 percent 10 is the maximum boost um so yeah five percent per boost and you also could boost speed as well so like if you have money you could just drop like a few thousand and we don't know the prices yet but you know how however many you have to drop uh, to just get straight up a hundred on speed fifty percent on both attack and health for your whole team and that's kind of yikes um yeah I, I really don't know how to feel about that and like it's basically you could just buy you could just buy like a super top tier team like as soon as you get as soon as you get the dinos like yeah um i'm not a huge fan of this concept it and and i know it's you know it sounds like i'm complaining too much about this but um it seems really pay to win to me which i'm not a huge huge fan of here right your thoughts on that on um, you know the potential just just the pricing problem of it i guess and again we still don't know the prices but yeah just potential problems yeah i like i like i touched on before it is definitely a a pay the win concept um eventually everyone will get to um tier 10 mm -hmm. on each one yeah. but the people that can right, i don't right. like how how it is pay to win someone that can spend a lot of money and then like for example i'm gonna bring up myself i'm not gonna i am the type of person that can spend a lot of money so having like if you look at it tier 7 is 43 percent mm -hmm. so even if i get to tier 7 I don't even have to get to tier 10. I can get a 43% boost on attack and health. That's kind of a little over the top. And having a concept that is as big pay to win as this, I think overall isn't a good thing, which is why I'm hoping it's, it's just a separate arena altogether. Because otherwise, you're just going to ruin um, the new opt-in tournaments. Because people are going to go in there with they might not be they might have not paid for their teams, but have level thirty teams, but not have tier ten stats. But they worked really hard for a level thirty team. So I don't think that's overly fair. Mm -hmm. Um for the people that are working harder to keep up with the pay to win players. Mm -hmm. and, and also a quick correction on my part, I said it's like 5% per tier and that's not the case. Like from tier one to tier two is, uh, or is a 3% boost from so two to three is like a 5%. They, they're making like really weird increments. <laughs> Um, per tier, so uh, but yeah, adds up to fifty percent. Um, I and also um, a, a lot of a lot of people have to talk about. Oh, this is gonna, you know, get a lot of people to use some dinos that aren't really, you know, aren't 
or some underrated dinos, some dinos that aren't uh, as widely used as the top meta dinos. And um, yes and no. Um, sure, you could use some of that, but like you could like sure you could use like speed boost, like max speed boost or rex. That's gonna be really strong, right? But like your opponent's gonna just speed boost their, you know, Trichosaurus or you dial or Kyrus. They're gonna still use the boost on like the strongest meta dinos, and they're gonna become even stronger. Like <laughs> it, it, it kind of you know, it kind of nulls the, the the point of that, right? Like, sure, there are some underrated dinos that you could use it on, but if you use it on the most busted dinos, it's gonna be even more busted. So yeah, that's a bit of a problem, I guess. I don't know separate arena because when they bring new dinosaurs in not only do you have to bring it up to team level but you have to bring it up to the team level and spend boosts on them mm. in order for them to be effective to me to me this is just a giant coin trap <laughs> maybe they're maybe they're not having a huge profit as they want and they're trying to produce something that would help with that but you gotta look at the majority of the community majority of the community is not gonna spend a crap ton of money right um i i i wouldn't go that far um say like it's a totally like a a pay to win move on Ludo's part since like I, I could see the intent like the intent is hey um some dinos that you probably want wanted to uh, use that you can use you could use stab boost and it could also be because a lot of these new hybrids hard to keep them up to team level use stab boost to keep them up stat wise to team levels or you know um or 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 even just to have another option for like two different directions of or uh, um, two scales of uh, modifying your creature's stats to have more unique dinos in the arena. Like that could also be a reason of why they're they're impl implementing this. But like, I don't know. I just feel like this will cause more problems than you know make make more um. Uh, or or create any more solutions to a lot of the problems that we already have, like uh, another pro pro problem that this this um could potentially have is um, we only have fifteen seconds to choose a move, right? So right now, um, since stats are all standardized, uh, you know what your opponent's dinos, or at least you know a general sense of what their stats are going to be, what you know how much damage you're probably going to receive how quicker um, they are than you or how slower they are than you or you, you know how many hits you need to get on them so that you can take them out and you only have 15 seconds to decide to move and now that um, with stat boost you'll have to like check every time and like like the calculation process is going to be way more complicated now with all these and you still you still only have 15 seconds to do these and um, ah, that's a huge yikes for me like I'm sure, like uh, you know, it's not the math isn't hard, but uh, I I know a lot of you know uh, younger kids probably play this game as well, and that's gonna be a, a bit more difficult. Not that I don't believe in um, <laughs> their math skills, but you know, it, it it would be a bit more difficult. So, uh, uh, do you have any thoughts on the on, on that angle? The you know, just the the the, the calculation, like the the more I guess logistical sides to the battling now. Yeah, I I completely agree. It's you don't get much time to decide to move, mm -hmm. um, to begin with. Um, now you're gonna have to check every single dino, all of their stats. You're gonna have to do that every single match without, um, just to just to be aware. It boosted attack and Dalarak can two shot Magna. Well, you're gonna have to check it to see if it can, mm -hmm. or you're gonna have to check its speed to see if you can bring in 
one of your dinosaurs that um should be able to outspeed it but might not because that Dilorak now has 175 speed. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I I completely agree on that end. If they they should probably add a few more seconds, maybe 25 seconds mm-hmm. per choice, just to give us a little bit of um as a heads up timer mm-hmm. so you have the time to check the stats and uh one last point about stat boost before we move on um and i'm not 100 percent sure like it's <laughs> i could be wrong on this but if you get your dinos hit it like in the very very end game you have a full team of level 30s um they're all stat boosted to the max and everyone you're facing around you is all level 30 teams all stat boosted to the max does that mean you just spent like a bunch of money for like nothing? Like you're just back to equilibrium? Is That's it... where I was getting at right? with the coin trap. Yeah. It's just you're just they're just spending money to go back to to race to where they're already at. But then again on on the flip side, if you don't spend on this you can't really keep up. Mm-hmm. Ah, there's so many problems with stat boost. Anyways, um, well, I think we've spent enough time on stat boost. Let's move on to another topic. Um, stat boosts aren't the only thing that's in 1.7. Let's talk about my favorite uh, part of the game. Um, hunting. Going out in the world looking for dinos. And um, they made some new changes here. Geolocation. They have now daily migrations. That should be fun. Um... In, in in their patch notes, the example they gave was, like, uh, for example, Smilodons only appear on Mondays. And doesn't appear on any other day. Oh, whoa. I didn't notice that that half of the sentence until now, so. Oh, that might be a bit problematic. Like, and, and I've been saying this, like, the whole time, like, daily migrations could either be great or disastrous, because... You know, either you're gonna get more variety of dinos, or you, it, or it's just gonna give you a really, really hard time in finding one sp- a specific dino that you need. Like, if it, if like for example, it, it, just using their example, if Smile Don only appears on Mondays and not any other day, and like if you're if you're a busy person, if you go to work or go to school on Mondays, or um, yeah, on, on Mondays. Then, then your time window for farming Smilodon DNA, that's going to be really, really small. Um, and, you know, at the moment, Smilodon isn't anything important, but, like, say, oh, Rexes only appear on Thursday nights. Then you're screwed. If you work night night shifts on Thursday night, you're screwed. <laughs> like, you can't even play this game anymore, like, if you don't have Rex DNA, right? So I really don't know how this would play out. It's either going to be great or it's going to be absolutely terrible, <laughs> which I, I, I'm just scared of this one. Um, although we should know how it plays out in a few hours, though. Any thoughts on daily migrations, Tim? Um, I I see your points. They're very valid. Um, I hope that if they limit it to one day a week that it will change often like maybe okay Mm -hmm. this week is a monday next week is a thursday yeah um and let us know that ahead of time so we're not trying to scramble out trying to get it go out monday trying to find this and then go out the next monday and it's not there um I don't like the fact I don't like their example of this. Like Smile Down appears only on Monday, it doesn't appear on any other day. That's really bad. Yeah. Um the example you gave, school, work, I know I'm gonna be working twelve hours at least almost every Monday. Yikes. So I'm not gonna have much time. Mm-hmm. To get Smilodon. Mm-hmm. Um, 
but I I don't know. It really it really depends how often they do these migrations. I to me, I think it would have been better off if we had like how Pokemon Go has it with every other week is a migration. Um, not yeah, every every two weeks is a migration. I think that would um bring some light into the game. Mm-hmm. Um for people that T Rex during the night, okay. Two weeks from now, it might be T Rex during the day. Um, that way, everyone's getting a chance of getting everything. Um, it'll make the community as a whole happier. And, but I, as far as geolocation, I don't like, I don't like their example right now. Mm. Although how um, they have it. Uh, to, to make it sound better, they did mention and hear that um, they said every every, uh, every day bring new variety on a weekly rotation. So it shouldn't be that bad. But, like, it depends how they rotate it. Like, if it's just going to be, like, the same seven dinos and, like, they shift those around, like, uh, come on, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, and, uh, and another thing is, like, are they going to take these dinos out of, like, their, like, are they going to take them out of like globals and locals and then put them on rotation or are they like, are there just like a, a set of the dinos set aside for these, for a rope for rotations? Like that should be interesting as well. If, if, if you get what I mean, like, you know, say they're like for this week, they're going to take Rex out of global and then put it on this rotation. And then like, uh, you know, or on Thursday they'll take out Spinal Gen two, put it on rotation, or are they just gonna like set aside a set of dinos that will never be in global or local zones and will only put on uh, these kind of rotations? Cause like if it's a second one, oh, that's gonna be a bit tough. It's gonna be like a worse arena exclusive DNA <laughs> situation. Yeah, it, this is just another. Um, change in the game that really depends on their part how they implement it. Yep. Um, and uh, do you want to talk about the new dinos at all? Let's talk about uh, one of the most more more anticipated ones. Relico Specs. Spikes? Specs? I don't, I don't even know how you pronounce this. I doubt the person who who named it even knows how to pronounce it. Um, so this one's the Spinonix and Ehrlich Gen Two hybrid, right? Um, yep. Sacrifice a bit of health for even more damage. Um, Ehrlich, it it matches Ehrlich Gen 2's speed. That's one twenty nine. Um, it has minimal speed up, lethal wound, debilitating distraction, and precise rampage. That's the one that hits through uh, cloak and evasive. So, thoughts on this one? I am absolutely excited about mm-hmm. this dinosaur. And here's why. I am a hyper-offensive player. Oh boy. So, any dinosaur that has high speed, high damage, continuously puts pressure on an opponent no matter what they bring out is my type of dinosaur. And Orleco Spicks, I think, I'm just gonna call it Spex. Sure. <laughs> or it has it has yeah. It has it has everything. It has a way to increase its speed so that way if it revenge kills, they can't bring anything in to that that could be faster, that could affect it. Mm-hmm. Um it doesn't have immune, so something like Yoshi could just come in, um, distract Rampage and probably end up killing it. Um, so I do like that part. It sounds like it's going to have some decent, uh, some pretty good damage. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm hoping at least 1400 on it. Yeah. That would be nice. Yeah. I mean, and then it has, mm -hmm. it has lethal, lethal wound for all the tanks for Trico, 
Mm-hmm. Um, just to put pressure on a specific dinosaur, um, it has a distracting mood move with debilitating distraction, and then it has a move to get through evasive. Mm-hmm. And right now, evasive dinosaurs are on the top of the tier with Endo, Erlodom, um, Prosorathomimus. Mm-hmm. Um, so having having that type of move just helps it all the more better. I think I think they're giving it precise rampage just so that it hundred percent wins the 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 Erlodon matchup, and by that it's pro and if it's gonna win the Erlodon matchup hundred percent, that means it's gonna have over three thousand HP, maybe not too much over, and at least 1.5k damage and that would be beautiful <laughs> i hate that, Earl Tom that so would much, man i, I got, that would be just very I, I, beautiful uh-huh. i don't have Earl Tom, i just get screwed screwed over by it in the arena so so many times um but then <laughs> again um like i i guess the the best comparison for this dino is Earl Tom, i guess um like i think i honestly think if it really is over 3000 hp and higher than one point or or at least or i don't even want to say higher than because that's a bit absurd if it's higher than that but um if it's 1.5k damage um over 3000 hp i'm just gonna say it straight up it's better than earldom i really think it will be better than earldom if that's the case like debilitating distraction they buffed it 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 used to be a subpar move a lot of people thought like oh debility just distraction such a great move before but i i was rejected that notion because First of all, the only Don that has it is Ehrlich Gen 2, and Ehrlich, Ehrlich Gen 2 doesn't have too much HP. Second of all, it had a one-turn delay, so by the time you use it, your Ehrlich Gen 2 is almost dead anyways. But now it has a zero cooldown, and it's going to be, oh my god, it's going to deal damage, especially if Ehrlich Bix, uh, is, uh, uh, that thing's damage is going to be super high. Like, a one-times on that, <laughs> that wouldn't even be bad at all. Um, it's probably not going to have the 20% crit chance that Earldom has. So, like, thank goodness for that. <laughs> but, yeah, um, so far, this is probably, like, my favorite uh, dino uh, of this update. But it's going to be made out of Spino Onyx, which is created by Spino Gen 2 plus Barry Gen 2. And Barry Gen 2 is arena lock, just like Irritator. And everyone knows our struggles with Irritators. And, ah, uh, damn it. <laughs> they just had to do that to <laughs> us. Ugh. Um, another thing I would like to add mm-hmm. is they give the example that precise always hits, even through evasive itself. Mm-hmm. I'm assuming that means that it always hits even through um instant invincibility and, and those type of moves. Shields? No. Um. Uh, actually, there there there's a different move. Um. I call precise shattering rampage. So mm. they have to have the shattering. Um, That's right. Uh, word in it, but okay. like e- even without shattering, like it has lethal wound. Like it has like, m- mechanisms to deal with tanks. Lethal wound can deal yeah. with tanks. Although yeah, you know, this mm-hmm. this might be the best generalist in the game. It, it coming could out. be might yeah. Although might. although I think tanks could still deal with it because. Even though you're lethal, like you're putting a tank on a timer, but um, the tanks, a lot of tanks can still potentially two shot it, depending on its HP, which is why we can't talk too much about these dinos, just because we really don't have the exact stats of them yet. But they could potentially get two shot by tanks, but it also puts your tanks on a timer, a three turn timer, right? So, yep. yeah, you could do that. And then, you know, uh, that's why tanks are going to be super. I, I think relevant in this meta because like with a lot of the these like these triangles going around like bleeders versus tanks so and like you know tanks versus whatever you know uh, you know the whole the whole uh, triangle stuff and you're gonna have a lot of these in your team so you could create a lot of synergy off that for example um Erla Erla Spix like for example your lethal wound is Stegadius it Thagos it, it, you lethal wound it, it thagos you, then it rampage kills you, has one more turn left, and then you throw out an, another tank of your own. See a Diorajah or Trico or Gravolith, go for the 
uh, uh, in the first two case, go for the distraction or whatever, you know, not take too much damage, and then boom, you just you, you take out the attack of your opponents. Just a, a lot of these, um, the, the meta like kind of blends into itself, um, and, and you know, and goes into teams like team composition will. Like I, I think like the 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 you know the 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 whole counter cycle is gonna be way more important in this um, patch than any of the other ones because like it, it used to be in a lot of patches it's gonna be oh like for example one point two raptors are super good and tanks counter it so these two are like the top two uh, dominant types and then you know um when Trico and those guys got good Tonato and Thor like the dominant types in this meta are going to be chompers and then like the distracting dinos that counter them and the next meta i think everything like almost every single type of dino is going to be really really useful so that's that's something exciting to look forward to if oh and i just really hope stat boosts don't ruin it so uh yeah um there's my little soliloquy on that um, but I, I think we're, we're running a bit, uh, too long, and we only had, like, time to talk about one dino, but, like, Arla Spix, man, it, it's, it's gonna be such an interesting dino, I really wish it wasn't an arena-locked one, um, the, the components, but, uh, yeah, I can't wait to get my hands on one, yeah, it's gonna be great, at least use it in friendlies, I guess, or, like, just stat-boosted, like, to oblivion, and then put it on my team, I don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, um, any other, uh, dinos, uh, which, di which, which new dino are you, like, most uh, anticipating in 1.7? In terms, uh, well, my favorite is Daphne or Let Go Spikes, but I really like Gemini Titan. Mm -hmm. It, we're getting, we're finally getting that, well, Gripo is now becoming a tank, but... We're finally getting that unique tank that everybody's been wanting. Um, it has the most um, HP bulk in the game. They they say it has average damage, so it'll probably have more damage than a lot of the sauropods, mm -hmm. but not like too much more. Yeah. Um, it has. Speed of Diorajo, which isn't great, but it does Whoa. make it faster than some dinos that needs to be faster than. Right. Um, but I like how this dinosaur can handle almost any situation. It has the long protection. It has the instant distraction versus chompers. It has a rampage that um, slows that can really help it out. And then it has null on top of it, which helps versus, um, dinosaurs with cloak or, um, dinosaurs that boost such as Gripposuchus, um, with that ferocious, uh, what is it, impact? Gripolith, I think you mean. Or do you actually mean like Gripposuchus? I mean, not, not great, bro. Um, Gorgosuchus. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's a ferocious strike. Yeah, so, I mean, having nullifying strike on that um, mm -hmm. allows it to handle some dinosaurs that some tanks normally wouldn't be able to handle. Um, right. So, I, I, I really am hoping... That this is a pretty good dinosaur. Mm -hmm. But again, this has an even bigger issue than Erlico Spikes. Yeah. Diplodocus DNA. It it's not common at all. Yep. It's harder it's harder to get than arena exclusives. Mm -hmm. Um, so I don't see it going on my team anytime soon. Same. Yeah, maybe like sixty years from now. <laughs> I'm not even <laughs> sure if I could make it, man. Yeah, yeah. Like I, I'm at. I think mine's at level 
fifteen with three K DNA. Yikes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, probably not it, making it. Yeah, it's gonna be a long time. Uh huh. Yeah, I j- I really wish, and they didn't talk about this at all, which kind of worries me. But I really wish there would be better ways to obtain a lot of these arena exclusive DNAs, which I think. Like, I guess the only thing that I'm looking forward to, like, in, in terms of uh, Arena Exclusive DNA's next patch, since they haven't really mentioned anything else about them, is just the hybrid pursuits. Um, they're probably going to start with, what, Pura Taurus and then, you know, get all the hybrids. And hopefully, um, <laughs> I'll have time to dart all those Berry Gen 2s when they release them to the wild. I will go crazy. On rare sense, <laughs> when they release Berry Gen Two the Wild, <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah, I think I'll do the same. Mm-hmm. Anyways, uh, that's gonna be it for uh, this episode of Men Men. I haven't done one in a while. Just you know, just some random chatter about one point six and some stuff about random stuff about one point seven. Uh, a bit of a rant on stat boost. A bit of a um. Uh, <laughs> A lot of praise on early specs also, but also, you know, the problems with these new hybrid and stuff. But, uh, yeah, overall, uh, good good chat. Um, I can't wait for the update to come out. It's probably going to still be in maintenance uh, as you guys are listening to this, or if, it, or if you guys are listening to this afterwards, maintenance. And then, you know, it comes out that stat boost. Um, you can't buy them, and you'll have to earn them all, and then we'll just sound like idiots in this, uh, whole <laughs> podcast, then. But, uh, yeah, um, thank you guys for, uh, tuning in. Uh, can't wait for the update to drop. Like, he- here's a really weird thing about this update. Like, overall, I'm not a huge fan of a, a lot of these changes, but I can't wait for it to drop. Like, 1.6 has just been so dull for so long, I can't wait for this new thing to drop, even though I'm not a huge fan of a lot of things in there, but I, I can't wait. <laughs> Anyways, um, yeah, hopefully it drops soon, and um, I'll, I'll, I'll see you guys in a bit.